it's a continuation of the previous class so i will quickly go through what i explained in the last class and then the new topic i will explain so we started with the concept of energy ability to do work or capability to do work we called energy and the si unit or standard unit of uh, energy is joule there are other units but si unit is joule and our main source of energy is the sun then we discuss different forms of energies chemical energy the energy which is stored inside the food or the fuel or can only be released by a chemical reaction the second we start discuss kinetic energy energy which the moving objects are having any kind of movement is there the object will have kinetic energy gravitational potential energy when object changes the position or height with reference to the ground it will have a gravitational potential energy when energy travel in the form of light we call that as a light energy thermal energy the change in the internal energy when the internal energy of the object is changed we call that as thermal or heat energy sound energy energy due to vibration of the particle we call that as a sound energy electrical energy energy which is due to the moving charges when the particles or charges are moving we call that as electrical energy nuclear energy energy which is stored inside the nucleus of an atom we call that as nuclear energy which can only be released by two ways either nuclear fission reaction or a nuclear fusion reaction wind energy energy due to the moving air current or air due to conventional current of air or movement of the particle we call that as wind energy strain energy when the object will deform or change its length shape or size when we apply the force the energy stored in the object and this kind of energy or form of energy is known as elastic strain energy the conservation of energy state energy cannot be created nor be destroyed but changes from one form to another so in this example a person is having a chemical energy he push the rock vertically upward so it will have kinetic when it reach the certain height it will have potential or gravitational potential as it return back it will have kinetic once it hits the ground that will be heat and sound energy this is all i explain just a quick revision because the topic is interrelated that's why i want to revise the previous topic this is the energy change so water falling or a falling water because it's at certain height so it has gravitational potential energy in short you can write gpe which means gravitational potential energy and as it is moving it changes to kinetic energy and it as it hits the bottom the surface then it will change into sound energy energy calculation kinetic energy if you want to calculate we can use a formula half mv square where m is the mass v is the speed or the velocity at which the object is moving gravitational potential energy if you want to calculate the potential energy or gravitational potential energy its mass multiplied by gravity multiplied by height we'll get the gravitational potential energy so 5 kg object lifted to a height of 2 meter gravity is 10 so when you multiply you will get 100 joules renewable energy resources if energy resource can replenish over a short time or can be can form in a short time or available in greater amount as compared to what we utilize we call that as renewable energy resource and non such as solar wind hydroelectric geothermal and non renewable such as if energy repelish does not repelish in a or cannot be repelish in a short over a short period of a time we call that as non renewable energy resource such as coal oil all these fossil fuels and nuclear fuels once we utilize the energy we cannot use the energy again from that how we can generate electricity from by renewable energy resources that we discussed so example if you want to generate electricity by or use a solar energy 
So what happened? The heat, the energy from the sun, which is in the form of light and heat, it fall on this solar panel. And what it caused? It caused the movement of electrons. So as these electrons move, there's an electric current. The solar panel does not have any mechanical system, means there's no moving part. It's just a stationary that a light falls and it produces electrical current or electrons. Energy change that take place, heat and light energy from a sun changes directly to electrical. The block diagram means what we are using. We are using a solar panel and I mentioned transformer in a block four you will study in detail. But here just introductory concept that a transformer, a device which is used to, for power transmission. So if you want to transfer the power from one place to another, basically electrical power, we use transformers. These are some advantages and disadvantages of solar cells or solar power stations. Wind, so energy change here, the kinetic energy changes to kinetic energy of wind, changes to mechanical or kinetic energy of turbine and generator, which produce electrical energy. The block diagram, what we use here, we use a wind turbine and we use generator and we use transformers. The purpose of transformer is for power transmission. These are some advantages and disadvantage of wind, wind mills or wind power stations. The third one was geothermal. So it's energy from the core of the earth and it's uh, too much available. So we can use this energy. That's why it's a renewable energy resource. So we put add a cold water, it will absorb energy from the core of this. It is actually not going, the water is not flowing towards the core, but the heat energy which is released by the core is absorbed by this water, which convert into steam, steam rotate the turbine and turbine will produce. Rotation of a turbine is connected to a generator and generator coil when it rotate, it produce electricity. Then there are some power, uh, this is an energy change, the block diagram and advantages and disadvantage of geothermal power station. Hydroelectric power station. So for hydroelectric power station, first we have to stop the flow of the water to build a dam. And when we allow this water to flow from a greater height or changes in the height of the water as it flow, so it will produce, the potential energy will change to kinetic and that can be used to rotate the turbine as the turbine rotate, it will, it is connected to generator, which will produce electricity. Then this is the energy change, the block diagram as, as well as advantages and disadvantages. These are the, this is a generation of electricity by renewable resources. But if you use non-renewable resources, example, we are using fossil fuels such as coal power station. So this is a new topic, a coal power station. How we can use this coal or a fossil fuel to generate electricity. So for this purpose, we have a chamber, a closed chamber, and inside this chamber, we have a fossil fuel. And what we will do, we will burn this fossil fuel. So as we burn the fossil fuel, it can be coal, oil, or gas. So the moment we burn the fossil fuel, what it release, it will release heat energy. And this heat energy we place a water pipe close to this chamber. So when we place this water pipe close to this chamber, one side, a cold water or a water at room temperature enter. But because this water will absorb energy, so as this water will absorb energy, its temperature will rise and this water will convert into steam because of high temperature. As the water is converted into steam, other side, we have a 
turbine. And what happened when this, these water, uh, steam particles, they collide with the turbine, so they rotate the turbine. And this turbine is connected to generator. Because there is one part in a generator which is called a coil. If we can rotate the coil, we can produce electricity. So what happened with the turbine, the coil is connected, coil of a generator is connected. And when this coil will rotate, it will produce electricity. So burning of a fuel produce heat energy. This heat energy is absorbed by the water, which convert into steam. That steam rotated the turbine. When the turbine rotate, it is connected to a generator, which will produce electricity. So using this way, we can generate or produce electricity. But the disadvantage is that because you have to once you burn, like example, if you took one tons of coal to produce electricity, once all of this one ton is burned, you have to supply fuel again. Like you have to add coal again so that you can burn and produce energy. So continuously we have to, or time to time, we have to add a fuel to this so that this power station can continue and work smoothly otherwise if once you have one ton of uh, coal and you burn all of that then the generation of electricity will stop because no more combustion or no more burning of the fossil fuel is it clear the idea so first what will happen we have a fossil fuel we have a fuel or a fossil fuel example coal oil or gas it can be anything so what we will do, we will burn the fuel. So when we burn, like whenever you're burning a fuel, burning a fossil fuel, it releases heat energy because the reaction is exothermic. The heat energy which is released is absorbed by the water which is nearby in the pipe. So this water or a cold water will absorb energy and it convert into steam. So as this water will convert into steam, the steam will collide with the turbine. It rotated with the, it rotate the turbine. As the turbine is connected to a generator, it will produce electricity. So this is how electricity is generated by using a fossil fuel such as coal, oil, or gas. Any kind of fossil fuel can be used here. This is actually how it does look like but you don't have to go in detail this is a simple diagram which shows what happened so there is a fossil fuel a chamber in which you burn the fossil fuel release heat energy absorbed by the water which convert into steam steam rotate the turbine as the turbine rotate it will generate electricity as a turbine rotate, it is connected to generator and the generator is producing electricity. So what is the energy change here? The energy change first, what we have, we have a chemical energy. Why it's a chemical energy? Because you have a fuel, so chemical energy. When you burn the fuel, it produces heat energy. That heat energy absorbed by the water converted into steam. So it will be kinetic energy and kinetic energy is mechanical energy of turbine and generator, which will produce electrical energy. This is a block diagram. This is the energy conservation conversion that take place in a fossil fuel. But the block diagram, this, this is not hydroelectric, it's, this is not hydroelectric, actually it is chemical. So you have a boiler, boiler, then you have turbine. Boiler is the part where 
you are, you add a water and it will convert into steam that's called a boiler and whole the chamber plus where you are converting water into steam like this chamber where you are burning a fuel and around this chamber so around this chamber you have a water so when this water will absorb energy this water will convert into steam this is around the chamber where you are burning the fuel and then what happen you have and then at the last turbine is there so as the water absorb energy it will convert into steam it start to move when it collide with this turbine it rotated the turbine turbine is connected to a generator which will produce electricity so that's this part is a boiler this one is a turbine and generator is not shown in the figure a generator will produce electricity when its coil will rotate is this clear and the transformer Uh, now what are the advantages of using this coal or a fossil fuel or a non renewable power station what is the advantage or what are the advantages of using fossil fuel to produce energy so re reliability yeah it's reliable because you are make you are, you will be sure that how much electricity will be generated that's right what else one thing is reliable the second thing constant so building cost is not too much you don't have to like it's so it required less space to build the power station compared to other generators and disadvantage it pollute the environment and higher cost of running why higher cost of running because for other power stations you don't have to buy the fuel like renewable power station so for other power stations we can uh, we don't we have to buy uh, we don't have to buy the fuel but in this case we have to by the fuel so higher running cost is there it's non renewable this this a time will come when you will run out of this fuel so it's a non renewable is this clear the power station a coal power station yes sir then another a nuclear power station how a nuclear power station works or working of a nuclear power station basically it's a similar idea but the starting in a coal oil or gas power station we burn the fuel but here we have a nuclear fuel what is a nuclear fuel we have normally uranium rods this is a nuclear fuel
so what happened the same idea this nuclear fuel how we can release the energy from nuclear fuel there are two ways to release energy from nuclear fuel one is called fission fission means when the heavy nucleus break down into a lighter one that's called a fission another one is fusion when the lighter nuclei join to form a heavy both of them release or give out energy but because the fusion reactions control the large scale fusion reaction is not possible as we don't have as we don't have enough uh, like we don't have the material which can withhold or stand or can trap this much energy by a fusion that's why we don't use nuclear fusion in power station we use nuclear fission how fission is done so these are uranium rods we normally use there are different nuclear fuels uranium is a common one which is example 92 and 235 but there are other nuclear fuels such as polonium is there plutonium is also there polonium is there so these elements can be used as a nuclear fuel what we will do we'll take a nuclear basically whole atom is there but the nuclear energy is only released from the nucleus so this uranium if this was a uranium nucleus and it contain 92 protons and 135 minus 92 so 143 neutrons will be there so what we do we use a neutron and target this uranium rods of uranium or uranium so when we target this uranium what happen this uranium nucleus will split or break into smaller nuclei i'm just drawing the nucleus so it will break down into smaller nuclei it further give out more neutrons and it release energy this is called nuclear fusion so when we target this uranium rod by a neutron it release energy so how we utilize this energy so what we do the same process what we did in a power station a uh, coal power station that this energy will convert water and water or norm water at room temperature into steam because it will absorb energy so as it absorb energy it will convert this water into steam and what happen as this steam collide with a turbine so as this steam collide with this turbine so when it collide with the turbine the turbine will rotate and turbine is connected to a generator which will produce electricity so the only difference between the coal and the nuclear power station is the first stage so the only difference in a coal power station when we burn the fuel it release energy and it was having a chemical energy here we are not burning we cause a breakdown of a nucleus by a by a neutron and this called a nuclear fission reaction which release energy or heat energy converted the water into steam so what happen you have a nuclear fuel we use a neutron when this neutron hit the uranium it break down it break down the it bring down the uranium into 
lighter nuclei and release energy. The energy which is released is absorbed by the water, which is converted into steam. And as the steam collide with the turbine, it rotated the turbine, which will produce electricity. This is the actually how it looks like or how it appear. Look what happened. You can see here, these are the fuel rods. The, this part is a fuel rod. Fuel rod and control rod. Control, if you want to stop the reaction, for that purpose, we use cadmium or graphite. That's called a control rod. So a nuclear reaction take place. When the nuclear reaction take place here, it release energy. When it release energy, that energy passes through the water. So this water will absorb energy and it convert into steam. So when this water convert into steam, it collide with the turbine. So this is a turbine. You can see the turbine rotate as a turbine rotate. Here's a generator. A generator will produce electricity and that electricity you use transformer for transmission and you are utilizing that energy. Normally these power stations are built nearby the sea or a coastal area. Reason for that, because they need a coolant. Coolant means they need, they want to remove the energy, extra energy from the system. That's why it is built nearby a source of the water because continuously, otherwise what happened, the temperature of the, the temperature of this whole power station may rise too much and the walls might collapse. So they don't want the walls to collapse or break. That's why it is the water is, is used as a coolant for this. Is this clear? Any doubt in this? Nuclear power stations? So what is the energy change in a nuclear power station? First, we have a nuclear energy. Then this nuclear energy convert into heat energy. Then it convert into kinetic energy of the steam. Then mechanical energy of turbine and generator. And it will produce electricity. The block diagram, what we use, nuclear reactor, a turbine, and a generator. Then transformer just to, what is the environmental impact? So it pollutes the atmosphere due to production of large amount of, uh, this is large amount of fumes or water vapors, not smoke, it's. Large amount of fumes or water, it's dangerous to human body. Why? Because a new, it's continuously emitting out radiation. The fuel which we are using here, it's giving harmful radiations, which are dangerous. If a person is exposed to this radiation, that person may develop a cancer. So the radiations are continuously coming out from this fuel, which are dangerous for a human body. So it can cause a cancer to a person. Is this clear? The nuclear power station? There, um, another like fact would be that um, the, the, they use the ocean water to cool it down. So it will heat up the ocean, the ocean, which will affect the organisms in it by the yeah, well, yeah, That's also environmental impact because what happened? Here fumes, uh, Tosi fumes refers to water vapors. Because, and what happened as this water also, it will, because this fuel is continuously emitting out radiation. So when this fuel is continuously emitting out radiation, so this water will also become radioactive. Like it will have trace of radioactive material. So this water is not used, cannot be used. That's why these power stations are not built for nearby a drink like a source of the water, a fresh source of a water, like not a drinking water. That's why it is built near the sea or ocean.
is this clear the nuclear power station the nuclear energy converted into heat energy absorbed by the water water will convert into steam as a steam collide it will rotate the turbine as a turbine rotate it will produce electricity then what is the nuclear fission reaction nuclear fission reaction when the heavy nucleus split into lighter nuclei this is called a nuclear fission reaction so you can see here if you have uranium this is a nucleus this neutron and proton are there and electrons are revolving around because the nuclear change is for the nucleus that's why electron they did not draw so this is a nucleus of uranium we target this nucleus of uranium by a neutron that split into lighter nuclei lighter atoms and it releases further three more neutrons so when a heavy nucleus it was 235 92 and 235 but it become 90 and 143 so when the heavy nucleus is split or break down into smaller nuclei we call this reaction as nuclear fission reaction and opposite this already i discussed with you in nuclear energy fission reaction and what is nuclear fusion reaction when the lighter nuclei you can see here this is a lighter nuclei two hydrogen nuclei they join together and form one heavy nucleus it is not necessary they give neutron but if form a heavy nucleus we call that as nuclear fusion reaction nuclear fusion reaction occur on sun or stars but nuclear fission reaction we carry out in a power station then how we define a work or a work done definition of work so when we apply a force on the object an object is there and i apply a force of 30 newton on the object so object move from one place to another example object travel 4 meters so what is the work done or what is the work a force applied to move the object that's called a work or work done and work done or work can be calculated by using a formula force multiplied by distance so what force we applied we apply a force of 30 newton what distance we move we move this to a distance of 4 meter so 30 multiplied by 4 3 multiplied by 4 is 12 and then 0 is there so it will be 120 newton because the unit of force is newton and unit of distance is meter so it's newton meter newton meter is also known as joules so you can write 120 joules or you can write 120 newton meters it's the same thing no difference newton meter and joule is having a same meaning so when force is applied on the object and the object move then there is a work done but for example if you are trying to push the wall so you are trying to push the wall by applying a force of 30 newton is there any work done yes so you are applying a force of 30 newton but the wall does not move wall will remain stationary is there a work done work done is a product of force into distance no no work done because work done is a product of force multiplied by distance so force was 30 and the distance is zero you, you are not able to move that's why in this example there is a zero work done so what happened to the energy which you supply because to do a work done you have to supply energy so basically your energy is wasted in the form of heat to the surrounding your energy is not the useful energy is actually your energy is wasted to the surrounding so when we apply force and the object does not move it means there is no work done work work is done if 
we apply the force and move the object to certain distance. Same way, example, you want to lift an object, you want to move an object to a height of You want to move the object to a height of three meters and by applying a force of 50 Newton. But student A, how he did the work done? First, he lift to a certain height, that three meter, and then he move horizontally. This is what student A did. Another student B move it diagonally but to the same height. So when you compare the work done here for student A with student B because they both move the object to the same height the height of the distance which they move is same So when I calculate the work done by A, so work done by A will be force multiplied by distance. A applied a force of 50 Newton and moved the total, dis total height. Vertically, he moved to, to a height of three meters. So 50 multiplied by three. So work done by A is equals to 150 joules or Newton meter. What about work done by B? B also applied a force of 50 Newton, but he moved diagonally. So compare the distance which he moved so it will be 50 multiplied by three as well. So you will also get 150 joules. So what it shows, this shows that work done does not depend on the route or the path which you follow. Both A and B did the same work done because they move the object to a same height. So simply in short, if you move an object to a same height by different routes, like example, a student lift the object To, from a ground to a certain height, but he followed different paths. Like example, this is path A. This one is path B. And another student did the same thing and follow path C. So when you compare these work done, work done by A with B and with C, so what you will find, you will find that both, all of them have the same work done. So work done does not depend on the route which you follow. It depends on your starting position and ending position. If your starting position and ending position are same, it is independent how you're doing a work, your work done will be same. The useful work done. A, B and C are wasting their energies, like A is wasting most of its energy. The useful work done for A, B and C is same, but the waste energy of A will be more as compared to B and 